Kuro Kiro Ward of Sports are here with the legendary, the bad man himself, uh, JLP Sun. And uh, man, let's talk about uh, just tomorrow's card, sure. Ryan uh, Bader versus uh, Fedor. For fans who are maybe a little younger in the sport, kind of, you know, just, just kind of getting into MMA, how do you describe a, a, a Fedor and, and what they miss in the history of, of oh, that, that he did? Sure, sure. I, that's a good point. I've never considered from that standpoint. Uh, the greatest ever. Um, he was the greatest ever. And that's a debate, right? Greatest ever is, uh, is not only about your skills or your resume, but it's also a popularity contest. People have to like you to, to say that about you. And uh, people like Fedor. Everybody likes Fedor. It's, it's hard. I've tried to not like Fedor. It's, it's like impossible to do. Even the people he hangs around with, you know, he's, he's remained mysterious. Um, but he was very successful and very effective. There, there's nobody that, that did the sport opposite Fedor that proclaims he was anything other than the greatest, at least for a period of his career. Uh, Matt, today you were hosting the, the Lightweight Grand Prix, which is incredible. The the names on, on that list, the, the guys are going to have to face each other to, to reach the top. Obviously, uh, Uzman Nurmagomedov is, is number is the champ, obviously. If you kind of had to maybe pick which guy, which two are going to end up at, uh, you know, kind of cream yeah. the rises to the top yeah. with those two. Do you, do you have any uh, uh, in mind there? Uh, it, it, very difficult. You have three dark horses in that tournament. You, you have three dark horses that could definitely win that. A number of people that I speak to say the, the favorite is AJ McKee. Um, that's possibly true, but when you have Usman, who's the, the, the reigning champion of the world and he's undefeated, and his last name is Dermagomedov, I mean, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of uh, powerful stuff. So uh, I, I'll have a good, a good eye on Dermagomedov through this, through this whole thing, but I'm, I'm hearing a lot of other names getting thrown out there where, where people in the know think they're gonna be victors. I mean, just having a, a pit bull versus AJ McKee right off the bat, right? You had two champions, one of them's gonna get eliminated on Jump Street. Uh, either Benson Henderson, the best to have ever done it in that weight class, or the reigning champion, one of them gets, gets eliminated in the, in the quarterfinal round, so it's, it's awesome. Uh, man, Khabib, you know, obviously just kind of recently kind of decided, you know, it's kind of going to leave uh, MMA in the rear view. Were you kind of surprised by that? And, and what's Khabib's legacy uh, when, when it's all said and done? Yeah, I was a little bit surprised, and, and I think pleasantly so. It's it's very difficult. Um, fight, fighting is life, and I came from wrestling. Wrestling is life while you're doing it. But when you're not doing it, it's, it's very hard to just turn the page and put that behind you but it's so important to do and i was watching khabib get get pulled into some of those cracks the way that he's looked at the way that he's viewed living on the legacy of his father and, and what had been started um and then the only thing that you don't have left is time and time is the most important thing so i i watched that happen from a distance khabib did a great job and i kept my mouth shut but as soon as he decided openly i'm going to spend more time with his family that's the right choice he made the right choice uh, man, Khabib's kind of legacy lives on, obviously, in Usman and, and Islam, obviously fighting Volkanovski uh, in, in a couple weeks here. Man, that's a, a great matchup between, you know, two of the, the top pound-per-pound pound guys. Do, do you lean one way or the other when, in that matchup? Yeah, well, I, I don't... I understand why Islam is the favorite. I, I strongly disagree with him being a 3-1 to one favorite. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest fights that, that Dana White's ever put on, and I don't know that, that Dana knows that. It, it fell into his lap in many ways. It was very organic. He didn't have to go build it in the back. These two guys got in the cage in front of the world with the camera still rolling. They made this match. So, um, to, you got to understand, Volkanovski has never lost, ever. Uh, he's ranked number one, and, and there is no size difference. I, I've heard some real cowardly people say there's a size difference. There is no size difference between 45 and 55. That is the same thing. And and when, when people tell you there's a size difference, they're, they're really disclosing who they are as a person. That, wow, somebody got so much bigger. It's not bigger. It's four kilograms. It, it doesn't count. It's the same thing. Heavyweight and light heavyweight is separated by 60 pounds, just by example. This is four kilograms. It's the same thing. One guy is ranked number one, one guy is ranked number five. But the guy ranked number five is a three to one favorite. Those don't go together. So they're either either the odds makers or the ranking committee, one of them needs to get up and walk out of the room because they're not needed. Uh, 
Mateo, what do you think about this Francis Ngannou situation and, and what it means for maybe the future of MMA, right? I mean, you have the heavyweight champ of the world current in the UFC. Just just leave the, the, the biggest promotion there is and, and test free agency. What, is, what does that say about the future of MMA and, and maybe where it's going? And, and what, you know, what, what do you, where do you think Francis lands? Well, you know, I, I hope it doesn't speak to the future. It's, it's a terrible example for, for a leader, for, for a leader and a champion in the locker room that's supposed to set an example for the rest. Um, you know, I don't like it. But uh, as far as where Francis is going to go, I think that he, I think that he's a talent, and I think that, uh, um, you know, I think that there would be a door open for him to to return right where he left. Um, you know, I'll, th I'll throw that at you. I, I don't think it's over. When John Jones left the company three years ago, he, he tried to burn it down. He's about burning a bridge. John put C4 all over a bridge, just didn't know how to ignite it. If he knew how to. He would have done it. He would have taken the UFC down if he knew how to. Um, Francis didn't do that. He was a real gentleman. He never used profanity, never raised his voice. Something didn't work for him right now, he stepped away. And I, I only offer you that because I think that Francis could come back. Is John uh, uh, Ghana a good kind of maybe substitute for, uh, you know, or not substitute, but I guess, you know, a, a legitimate uh, fight for the title at heavyweight? Yeah, I think that is very relevant. I don't know what happened to Stipe there. Um, I mean, I just, I don't know. Stipe doesn't tell us very much. I just, I don't know. Stipe says he'd like to fight the winner, but why fight the winner? He could have fought one of them now. There was rumors that he was, could have fought him in December. So if you couldn't get the fight in December and you can't get the fight now, why six months from now would, would we believe that he'd be the leading candidate to get the fight? I think that's a fair question by me. I'm a Stipe supporter, but it's a fair question. What's going to be different in six months other than a, a division that is unformed is going to start to form itself. A division that's got a bunch of uh, questions is finally going to have a bunch of answers. So I don't think it looks good for Stipe. Um, and, and as far as John and Surreal fighting for a belt, man, yeah, the, 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 I, I think that's probably the right match to make. How, how does John look at, at heavyweight, you think? I mean, obviously, he put on the size very well. I mean, we haven't seen him sure. you know, that big. He's a big guy. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he'd carry the weight, but, I mean, what, what do you think he looks like? Uh, after a long layoff as yeah. well. Well, and I've, and I've disagreed with John, right? Like, you got to defer to John. Uh, just by example, John thought he needed to take some time to get up to 240 pounds. That was the number. It was kind of seemed arbitrary, but he needed 240 pounds is what he said. I thought John could have fought at light heavyweight on one Saturday and the very next night fought at heavyweight and won the championship. That's what I thought. When I see John, that's where I see his skills versus the field, but he didn't agree with me. He, he needed to be 240. So um, I, I think that's interesting. Interesting. I'm into the whole uh, John Jones experiment, but I do look at what John did. I think he's one of the greats ever. Heavyweights suck. Heavyweights have always sucked. There, there's never been a heavyweight that anyone said was any good, let alone one of the best ever. There's, you're, they're, they're good heavyweights. Who is the best heavyweight? Who's a great heavyweight? They're not actually good. They suck. Everybody knows that they suck. But I bring this to you. It's very relevant. You've got one guy who's discussed as the best ever. He's not, but he's in there. St. Pierre's the best ever, but John might be uh, two or three, wherever you wanted to put Khabib in, against a field that sucks. So uh, I would expect that John would win. Uh, how do you feel about the the, the slap, the this the slap fighting, or I don't even know if you call it fighting, really, just this slap yeah. situation that's going on in sports right now? Are, yeah. are you a fan of that? Or? The slap situation. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I like how you said that. Uh, I want to be a fan. I mean, I want I want to have an open mind. I'm not a fan. I'm not a sports fan, but I want to be. I, I want to enjoy uh, and have something to look forward to. Um, more than just combat, so um, I'm open to it. I'm, I'm very open to it. They're going to have to convince me that there's a skill in letting somebody hit you, and I think that's going to be an uphill battle, but if they do convince me of that, I will definitely be on board. Chael, is, is there anyone uh, in your career or maybe that, that you wish you would have gotten the just the, the verbal battle with the, the verbal kind of the back and forth kind of test obviously your mind is very sharp you're, you're well, very quick with it that. is there anyone that you wish you could have battled against uh, mentally like that I don't know I don't know that there was anybody there there was discussion of, uh, of a battle between me and the rock and it was gonna be for charity and I thought that was very fun um, I thought that was fun and I was on board for that um, uh, but he's very good. There, there's a few. There was a few out there was good. I don't. I don't know if they were as good as me. But I, I tell you what, I would have tested it. I don't. I don't think they could say the same thing. I, I agree, man. There's only one Chael P. Sun in there. Thank you so much for your time, Chael. Tell the fans uh, where they can follow. You. I know you got. You know your. Uh, I believe it's a oh, podcast. Oh no 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 no, no 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 no. If you if you're not following me now, I don't need you. No, I gotta tell it. you, I'm, I'm number one. I'm on top of the world. And if you haven't got there yet, you haven't found your way, man. You're too late. Go follow somebody else. <laughs> Much appreciated, Chael. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Cool.